Welcome everyone to another Thinkorswim tutorial. Today I wanted to go over how you guys can place your options trades based off the underlying stock price. Now you guys might do this for individual option legs, for spreads, you might do it to enter a new position or to stop you out, but either way the process is pretty much the same regardless of how you want to do it. So let's just say for this very first example, I was looking at Google, which if I look up here is currently trading for 194.04. And let's just say I didn't want to buy a call option right now. I wanted to buy the at the money call or the 190 call if Google ever dropped down to 190 or lower. Now to do that, let's go ahead and first pull up an option chain. So we'll come over here to the trade tab and looking down here below, let's just say I wanted to use the 21 February of 2025 as the example. So we'll go ahead and click on that to open it up. And now if we look down here at the option chain, and remember I said I wanted to buy the 190 call on Google, which if I look right here is trading for 1215 by 1240. And just like with any other trade, we need to first build out the order ticket. So in this case, because I want to buy this option, I'm going to click on the asking price, $12.40. You can see that automatically builds out the order ticket right down here below, just like normal. So right here I'm saying I want to buy one of the Google 21 Feb, 190 calls for $12.40 a piece. And if all I was doing was placing a normal order to let's say buy this contract if I could ever get it for, I don't know, let's just say 10 bucks in total, this would be all I would have to do. So here I'm saying if I can buy this contract for $10 or better, go ahead and do it. But if I instead wanted to base this order off of the stock price and say I only want to buy this contract if Google falls below 190, what I instead need to do is come over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket and click on this little gear icon. Now, if you've never been here before, what this little window is showing us is the conditions that we can set to base this order off of. Now, this up here at the top, this is actually exactly what we just filled out on the previous screen. So it's the exact same inputs. It just looks a little bit different. Whereas this section right here in the middle is where we could set time conditions, study conditions, or in our case, pricing conditions. So for example, I could use the time conditions up here to say I only want to submit this order at 2 p.m. on Friday, or I could come down here to one of the study conditions and I could say I only want to submit this order when the 50-day moving average crosses above the 200-day moving average. But in our case, it's actually a whole lot simpler. All we have to do is click in the empty row right here, right below the word symbol. It'll then automatically pre-fill it with the symbol that we're currently trading. So in this case, Google. But I could theoretically change that if I wanted to base this order off of the price of the S&P 500 or the price of Netflix or Microsoft. But most of the time, you're going to leave that be, let it be preset as the symbol we're currently using. I'm then going to come over here to method. And again, just click in that empty box. You can then see it prefills as the mark price. So again, I'm saying when Google's stock price is greater than or equal to, well, actually we do want to use less than or equal to, so I'll leave that be. And I only want to submit this order if it's less than or equal to 190 a share. Actually, I left a period in there. Let me delete that out of there. So now if I hit enter, that is now saved. And again, all I'm saying is I do not want to submit this order above until this condition is met. So do not place this order to buy that one contract of the Google 190 calls until Google falls below 190. And we're not quite done yet, because remember, if this condition is ever met, this order is going to be submitted. And in this case, I have no idea what this option is going to be trading for when that happens. I could probably make a guess and I could estimate it and put a price in here, or I could simply change this over to a market order meaning whenever that condition is met, whenever Google falls below 190 a share, put out a market order to fill immediately, and I'll take whatever the price of it is at that time. And even though I could do that, I could use a market order, most of the time I never want to do that using an option contract. Because if you've been trading options for any amount of time, you know the spreads on those options can get crazy wide, and you could end up way overpaying for this option. Or when you're selling, you could sell it at a deep discount, way lower than you should really get, just because there's no buyers or sellers out there at that time. So what I instead like to do is come up here to where it currently says market and flip it back over to a limit order. But now instead of putting in the price myself, which is a manual price that I'm entering on my own, I put in $10 up here. What I'm instead gonna do 
is link it to the price of that option. So I'm going to come down below and I'm going to click on mark. And as it sits right now, I'm saying whenever this order actually activates, whenever Google falls below 190 a share and this order gets submitted, I want the price of my option to be based off of a limit price. I want to specify the price, but I want it to go in at the mark price of that option, which is usually going to be the midpoint. So let's just say, for example, that when Google actually falls to 190 and this order activates, let's just say the option at that time was trading for like a dollar by a dollar fifty. Well, in my case, because I said I wanted to go in right at the mark price, my order is going to go in at a dollar twenty-five, right in between those two prices. Now, because I am specifying a price, I am still using a limit order. This order might not fill because theoretically, I might not get filled at a dollar twenty-five. But at least it offers me a little bit more protection than something like a market order where I'm basically just saying, hey, I'll take whatever you guys are willing to sell it to me at. But this would be it. Once we've got it set, we would just come down here and hit save. And that's our order right here. So if I came down below and actually hit confirm and send and place this, I would now have an order that says I only want to buy this 190 call when Google falls below 190. And I still want to use a limit order but I want that price to go in at whatever the current mid price of the option is at that time. But let's also say that besides just buying this contract, I also wanted to put a stop to go out right behind it to get me out if it ever fell below 185. So in that case, what I would need to do is come down here to where it says advanced order and it currently says single order. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and flip it instead over to first trigger sequence. And remember, that just means that when this order fills, I want to trigger the next order to go out there. So what I'll do is I'll come down here below to the green line and I'm just going to duplicate it. Or in this case, I'm actually going to create an opposite order. So instead of buying it, I instead want to sell it. And because I created the opposite version of it, it actually included those conditions that I set previously. So what we're going to do is come over here to the far right, just like before, click on the little gear icon here. And remember, that brings up the little conditional window here. And instead of submitting this order when it falls below 190, like the previous trade, I want my stop to activate if Google falls below 185. So now I'm saying I essentially want this to act as my stop. So if I buy this call option when Google falls below 190, I automatically want to sell it if it falls below 185 because I just want to cut my losses at that point. And if you look up here, it's already preset to go in at the midpoint of that option when it actually activates. So I don't even need to change anything up here. It's still linked to a mark price. And right now there is no offset. So it's going to go in right at the midpoint. And because that's all well and good, everything looks all right. I'll just come down below and hit save again. And now I've got everything filled out from the entry to the exit. The only thing I don't have covered here is the profit taking portion of the order. But for this example, let's just say I want to do that myself. Whenever it goes up to my profit target, I'm going to come in here and manually close it on my end. But that's all we have to do to create an option order that's linked to the underlying stock price. It'll be the exact same process regardless of the type of trade. So if I were to do that again, let's instead delete this out of here. Let's just say for this next example, for whatever reason, I wanted to sell a 190 by 185 put spread on Google if Google ever fell to 192 a share. So we're gonna go ahead and build out that spread. So we'll come up here to the 190 put, currently trading for $6.70, and I'm just gonna click on the bid price. You can see down here below, it built out that order to sell one of the 190 puts on Google. And now in order for me to, alongside that, buy the 185 put, I'm gonna come up here and hold down control on my keyboard. I'm then gonna click on the asking price of that option I wanna buy. It's right here currently trading for 680. Click on that. And now I've got the vertical spread built out right down here below. And if all I was trying to do was sell it for 92 cents, or let's instead say I wanted to get a dollar for it, if I filled that out and hit confirm and send, that's just a normal order to sell this spread if I could ever get a dollar or more for it. And honestly, most of you watching this should probably be placing your trades that way anyways. But just like before, if for whatever reason you wanted to base this order off of the stock price rather than the option price, what we're going to do is come over here to the far right hand side and click on that little gear icon again. We can then come up above and actually set our conditions. And remember, we just need to click in the symbol box right here. Defaults to Google because that's the stock that we're trading. We're going to come over here and base it off of the mark price of Google. 
And for this one, just like before, it is going to be if Google stock price is less than or equal to. But this time for this example, we're going to be saying if it ever falls below 192 a share. So again, I am simply saying I only want to sell this vertical credit spread against Google if Google falls below 192 a share. And at the moment, once this actually activates, it's going to submit an order to sell it for a dollar or higher. But instead of that, remember what we could do is we could use a market order and just say sell it for whatever I can get it for at that time. Or we can leave it set to a limit order, but instead of putting in the price ourselves, we say we want to link it to the price of the option at the time it activates. So let's just say if Google does go down to 192 and this spread is trading for $2 by $3, I'm going to put in an order at $2.50, right between the bid and the ask for the entire spread. And then if everything looks good, we simply come down below and hit save. But hopefully that helps. It's not really that tricky to do once you do it a couple times. But honestly, most of you watching should probably be using the actual option price rather than the stock price. Because remember, there's a whole lot that goes into the pricing of an option that has nothing to do with the stock price, right? We've got volatility, we've got time, we even have interest rates. So most of the time, you probably want to base your trades on your options on the actual option price. But if there's a really good reason and it makes sense and you really want to base it off of the stock price, this is how you can do it. Now, after watching this video, if you still want to learn more, go ahead and check out this next video to learn some other helpful tools on Thinkorswim, and I'll see you all there.